G'day guys, so I have a little bit of an issue with my Nissan GU Patrol. Essentially my EGTs or my exhaust gas temperature is a little bit higher than what I want it to be. And in addition to that, I noticed that this car fluctuates quite a bit when I put my foot down on the throttle. Essentially the boost is like kind of going up and down, up and down, and you can really feel it when you're trying to, you know, pick up some speed. So I think I found myself a little bit of a solution to this, and that is a Tilex and needle valve. So what I'm gonna be doing today is installing the Tilex and needle valve. I've already driven the car, I've recorded what my EGTs are prior to the installation of this Tilex and needle valve. And then yeah, what I'm gonna do is drive the car after the installation and see what my EGTs are then. And yeah, I also wanna see what the Tilex and needle valve will do to the overall performance of the vehicle as well. You know, am I gonna get a smooth kind of rev range um, in terms of like the boost and everything like that? And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. So yeah, without further ado, let's get stuck into it. So the installation of the Tilex and needle valve is super simple for these GU Nissan patrols. There are instructions on the Tilex website that I'll link here. All you have to do is go through step-by-step step to install and yeah, you shouldn't really fall into any hiccups at all. The main tool you're gonna to be using on this install is a flat head screwdriver and a pair of scissors as well to cut the hoses. Okay, so the installation of the Tilex and the needle valve to my G Patrol is now complete. So I guess a really simplified explanation as to how this whole system works. Prior to the installation, I had a vacuum solenoid and the turbo actuator working away together to control the boost that goes into the engine. The vacuum solenoid controls the spool rates, more or less, and the actuator talks to the ECU and controls the max boost and controls the, the flow rate of the boost. Now what I've done here is I've fully bypassed the vacuum solenoid and put in place a needle valve. The needle valve just allows me to manually control the spool rate or control how fast the boost comes on, essentially. And what I've also done is I've put in a Tilex valve. The Tilex valve goes near the turbo actuator and it also taps into a boost source. And what that does is it essentially provides a steady flow of boost and it also allows you to set what your max boost is as well. Now, obviously the installation of these two things is one step. The next step is to fine tune them to your desired spool and max boost. The needle valve, turned all the way clockwise or fully closed, gives you your max spool rate. Turning this anti-clockwise will reduce your spool rate, so it's as simple as that. With the doors valve, if you turn it all the way open, i.e. if you spin it anti-clockwise, all the way to the point just before it kind of opens up, that's gonna be your lowest boost setting. And then every partial turn clockwise you do is going to increase the boost. Now what you wanna do is go for a drive, make sure you guys have a boost gauge so you can kind of monitor what the boost levels are. And what you wanna do is fine tune the Tilex valve and the needle valve to a boost level and a spool level that you want. Oh, I am so excited to see how this goes. So I'm just at the moment testing out the car with the Tilex and needle valve and the difference has just been insane. Night and day difference, so much more power, so much smoother in the rev range, and the EGTs are lower. It's just incredible. It's like a, a it's like a magic pill for the car. It's crazy. Okay, so I've just gone for a drive of the car and it's pretty insane the difference that this Tilex and needle valve setup has done to my vehicle. So I guess there's two things that this setup has done. I'll talk about the first thing, which is the performance. In essence, I have boost earlier on, so I'm hitting my max boost at around 1800 to 2000 revs. And that max boost is kind of held on as long as I put my foot flat on the throttle, which has made such a difference in terms of the amount of power that I have, which is really cool. The other thing that it's done performance wise is it's negated the issue that it had before. Where essentially when I had my foot on the accelerator, the boost would kind of fluctuate quite a bit as I was accelerating. Now the boost stays constant, so I have this kind of constant 
rev range and it just makes driving so much better. Now the other issue I had obviously was my high EGTs and my high exhaust gas temperatures. Prior to the installation, I went on the highway and I was driving at 100 kilometers an hour on a slight incline. So a very, very slight incline, not too much of a hill. And I was averaging 450 to 500 degrees on my EGT gauge. Now that's obviously very high. 550 is probably the limit for me. And I was hitting around 550 when I was going up hills, which yeah, it's not good. Driving the car now with the new system, my EGTs have dropped by around 50 to 75 degrees, which is awesome. I'm starting to average around 400 degrees in the exact same conditions, 100 kilometers an hour, slight incline. But I even saw it go a little bit lower. It's going like 375, which is just really awesome for me. The EGT probe itself is installed post-turbo on the dump pipe. So I hope that gives you guys a little bit of a reference. But yeah, even though it did reduce my EGTs, they are still a little bit higher than what I would like. But hey, I'm still really happy with this new kit. It still made a big difference. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to uh, comment on the video or reach out to me on Instagram. I actually have a front mount intercooler that has arrived that I'll be installing into this vehicle. So I'm hoping that will also assist in dropping my EGTs and even improve my performance as well. My overall goal for this vehicle, obviously, as I've said in other videos, is reliability. I just want to make sure that this car is as reliable as possible. And yeah, if I can get a little bit of power out of it as well, then that's awesome. So thanks for watching the video and I'll see you guys on the next one.